okay, let's bring this baby home. I was a landlord who had a tenant, the same tenant for 12 years. Around year 10, she stopped paying rent. The world was in a pandemic, so the courts shut down. And the system said she had rights, tenant rights, to sit there in heat and water and comfort while I footed her bills for one year and a half. And then the world decided to try and right itself. The courts reopened and I, without a lawyer, filed for eviction. I won, all was fair, or some version of it. Until September 8th, 2021, the day of the eviction. In short, my tenant Molly whopped my ish. Her main weapon of choice, the damn water I was forced to keep on. And then there was the raw chicken and the pork chops and the tens and twenties of raw sausage rolls she rolled down the vents, along with lard and yogurt and beans and mayo. Who even has that much mayo? Turns out I was better than blessed because my insurance policy covered it all. This is the finale. This is the nine month journey it took to put my house back together. This is how the story ends. Good, almost. Well, I guess it is evening. Good evening. It's 7.30 p.m. All right, so I wanted to come up here and share an update with y'all. Um, a big part of it is because I know there are so many lessons in this and I wanted to discuss. Um, the other thing is, but I don't know exactly how I want to share the update. So, a lot of you have been asking. I've been getting a lot of the same questions over and over. The questions are... Um, two, three questions, really. The house, what's going on with the house update? Two, what is the update on the tenant? Three, am I still going after the tenant? Um, those are the main, those are the main three things that everybody wants to know. So in this video, I want to talk about, um, the question about, Am I still going after the tenant or am I going after the tenant or have I gone after the tenant? I want to talk about that. Um, and I think I'm going to rewind a little bit. There was another video that I wanted to put out that may come out. After. I don't know when the video is going to come out, but it's going to come out. Basically, um, some of you know that my friend Corinne has also gone through this, a similar experience with having to evict a tenant from her house in Baltimore which was a lengthier process because they actually had it so that you had to give them like a 65 day notice whereas where I was it was a 30 day notice right so she was going through it a little longer um, as far as the eviction process goes she used the same lawyer that I used to assist me with mine now all I used the lawyer for was in drafting documents that's what I use the lawyer for but then I handled the eviction process myself like I filed all my paperwork myself and I did all the things um, on my own but she actually used the lawyer to facilitate her eviction process so on the day of the eviction I went with her and her lawyer was there to um, you know represent her and I thought hey this is a good time for me to actually meet this lawyer in person because I hadn't met him in person. And then I was like, and this will also be a good time to discuss with him my case about the tenant who caused over $130,000 in physical damage, destruction of property to my house, not to mention what was, what would have been an unpaid rent like all of that stuff. So we have the, the physical damage for what the insurance is covering. Plus we have the damage done that the insurance isn't covering. Plus we have the unpaid rents, right? So I want to talk to him about that. Now we were all in agreement, me, y'all, him, that we probably 
would not get anything from this tenant like you know even in a civil matter um for those of you who don't know we can't do can't file criminal charges against her because she was a tenant and tenants are protected by law whereas if she had just been a stranger not a tenant or even not even a stranger she wouldn't have been a tenant this would have been malicious destruction of property which is a criminal crime and then the amount of damage done would have possibly made it you know like higher than a misdemeanor like a felony like this is not small claims court stuff right so i wanted to um instead of doing it myself because i wanted everything to be done right and i wanted to be able to um file for all that could have been filed for like i don't even know if you could even tack on um distress whatever you know what I mean that's why I wanted to consult a lawyer about this um but we all agree that probably wouldn't get anything but for me this was never about getting anything right because y'all know I'm so blessed and um everything that comes to me comes to me from God not man God acts through man and I am a recipient of favor i'm a recipient of many blessings i'm a recipient of grace and mercy and all those things i know this so it was never about that but what it was about was the fact that this tenant should not be able to just get away with this thing free and clear right it should be on a record somewhere the eviction is on record but also what should also be on record because as a landlord anybody can come and tell you the story of why they were evicted hard times, COVID, you know, um, lost a job. They can tell you any story. And then a landlord's heart would have to say, I'm going to give you a chance. But what also needs to be part of the story is this wasn't just COVID. This was the heart of somebody who physically destroyed something because they chose not to pay rent. That story needs to be told as well as a cautionary tale for possible future landlords right so this is why i wanted to go ahead and do the civil case against the tenant but one thing i don't do in life ever 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 and and i don't even know if you guys noticed the pattern i don't even know if i've really expressed this pattern to y'all before because it's super intentional I wait. I don't act until I am given a clear yes. This clear yes, you know in your heart, you know in your feeling, you know when it's time to move. And to me, this is how God communicates with you, right? You know when there's a yes and you know when there's a no. You know when you're feeling hesitation, when you're feeling um, some sort of, what is it called? Not just red flags, but when people say, I had a gut feeling, or, you know, they had this intuition, this instinct not to do a thing or to do a thing. I'm a big believer in listening to that voice and fine tuning my ear so that I can hear that voice. So I don't act on anything in life until I'm truly inspired that, yo, today's the day, or here's what I'm going to do. And normally when I reach that point in my life, you can't talk me into a thing and you can't talk me out of a thing because I know what I know when I know, right? So when it came to, did you file against this tenant yet? I did remember in the early days, I did try to go and file. That's when I discovered all of these things that you had to have the receipts, literally. I couldn't just go and file something based off of, I think she did this much damage or I think she did that much damage. So we had to wait until we actually had the receipts, the numbers in for the damage that was caused and how much it's costing to put things back together. It's May now, how stealing together, right? So receipts are still rolling in. So I couldn't do anything before then. But I knew that since we were getting closer to having our final numbers, it was time for me to act on getting um, legal counsel. So when I went and talked to the lawyer about the situation, so he said two things. He said, A, you're probably not going to get any money. That's fine. This isn't about money. Then he said, well, if you just hate her that much, you can file. And I'm like, this isn't about hate. This ain't about hate. And I'm thinking, why is it? That with some people, and I want to say black people, because those are the, I know black, 
I'm more familiar with black people than any other race, right? So I'm not sure if this is a thing with other races too. But why is it that we feel that we not, we're not going to move on a thing unless a monetary gain is involved, one, or two, if it's an act of emotions, an act of revenge, an act of feeling away, right? Because for me, this is never about revenge or emotions. Honestly, I have no feelings as far as I really hate hate this person or dislike this person or wish harm upon this person. I don't have those feelings. What I do have are the feelings of this is my business and I get to honor and handle my business as a business person, right? It's not personal, it's business. If you did this to any establishment, they are not taking a personal stand of, you know, they're not taking the stand of this is so personal, whatever. They're taking a stand of this is, this is legally the steps that I'm taking to protect my enterprise to protect you know what I mean it's not personal it's business um and I explained to y'all before how I felt as a landlord that other landlords should be given this cautionary tale because what if this person had did this thing in the past but nobody bothered to file suit against the thing because they didn't want to be bothered or because they knew they weren't going to get anything. So they just didn't do it. So therefore, future landlords were not warned. We're not warned, right? So that was a thing. But even with that, again, it's not personal. So I didn't take his comment as, oh my goodness, I can't believe he said that. I'm not going to use him. No, I know where I stand. And I will use him because he's super thorough. He's very professional. And he gets the job done. So he was just saying that, A, if you're not going to get money, I guess you're just going to be doing it out of spite, out of hate, out of whatever. No, never that. So he was told me to go ahead and email him some information the very next day. But I did not get that feeling of, boom, let me go ahead and, and email this information to him. So I say that to say that I hadn't moved forward with the lawyer, even though I had all intentions of moving forward with the lawyer. I just hadn't done it yet. Plus, y'all know. A lot of you know, I have so many things on my plate that I'm juggling. So it just wasn't even priority for me. You know, I'm juggling not only the managing of that home and everything that's involved with putting that house back together, but my own home. You know, there's deadlines and things that are need to be fixed, need to be repaired, this, that, and the other. And my own life, vacations, getaways, that don't sound important to y'all. It is important. Um, <laughs> just things, just activities and events and stuff that um, I have planned because life doesn't stop. Life doesn't stop, y'all. We keep living and we live, right? So that was that. So, and again, remember I said, so I didn't get this clear, now's the time. I had the clear feeling of, not quite yet. That's what I had. Not quite yet. Okay. So in the, in the Maryland house, you know, I go and I check on it often, usually maybe about twice a week, look at progress. I'm also doing things around the house and just really taking note, writing down notes, asking questions, just being super involved in that process with the project manager of the, of the, situation. So I was over there um, this past weekend. And while there, I noticed that, oh, kitchen floors are in. The kitchen floors were installed. They weren't quite what I thought they were. I mean, ugh, I had the sample. The sample looked like one thing. Now that they're installed, it looks like something else, right? And then I also noticed that they were installing the same flooring in the uh, in the bathrooms, which the bathrooms were supposed to have a whole different floor. So I needed to call the project manager about that. And so the next day, I called the project manager and I discussed with him the things, in the, along with a few other things that I noticed around the house. And... um. I was quite clear, though, with the floors that I did not want to stop process progress 
to redo the bathroom floors. It's like, listen, those weren't the floors I picked, but you know what they're going to do because I'm ready for this thing to be done and I don't want any more delays or holdups. But I think one of my intentions was going to be that because they weren't the floors that I picked, Maybe there could be a monetary discount involved, but that's a whole nother story, y'all, because it turns out, y'all, I'm just so blessed. I'm just so blessed. So anyways, that's a whole nother situation. But those were my intentions behind calling. Don't want to stop process, progress, and maybe there's something that can be done in lieu of. So while talking to him, he tells me something that I'm going to share with you all. He says... That him, one day, him and his workers were at the house working. Now, they don't work every day because they there's nothing to do every day. They work as supplies come in and then they're there to work. So the fact that they were there, and then of course he as a project manager who manages multiple projects, he's not there every day. So on this particular day, he just so happened to be there along with the workers. When? Four four police officers showed up at the house and knocked on the door. Four. He said he answered the door and they asked for the tenant by name. He says that nobody lives there and they wanted to know can they search the property. He told them Sure, they can search the property. He said, it's empty. And the only people here are me and my workers. He said, the last people who were here, the last tenants, had tore the place up. And they have been working on it ever since to bring it back, to get it back, to restore it. And so, some way, somehow, you know, him and the police officers, I guess they were talking back and forth. Because then the police officers told him why they were there y'all why they were there I would not have wished on my worst enemy and honestly at this point in time she would have qualified as that as far as anybody in my life is concerned she's the closest thing I have to a worst enemy I would not have wished that they were there to give her some news. And I'm not going to go into detail about the news. I'm not going to go into detail. But it's tragic. Some of you guys can fill in the gaps. If you ask me in the comments, I'm not answering. I'm not going into detail. Um, but it's probably the worst thing that could ever happen to a mother. So you guys probably know what that is. You guys probably know. Worst thing. Worst thing. But they didn't stop there. So along with delivering this news, they were also there to arrest her because there were warrants out for her. That's the update. That's the update. Now, this is what I say. Now, I fact checked all of this. I googled the names and everything, and the stuff is there in the newspapers everywhere. Like, is it, it is like it's it's bad. It's bad because it's bad. Like. On all sides like y'all oh my goodness it's bad and the thing about it is I said before when all of this went down as far as the civil lawsuit goes because with the civil lawsuit is for monetary damage right they can place a judgment which you actually have to go back to actually get a judgment placed um, against the person after the award is one in your favor then you can get another thing executed and that's how things like checks can get garnished things like that right but I said for me once again it was never about the money it was never about the money 
And I had said to somebody, I might have said it to y'all, that with what she did, it deserved jail. It deserved jail. Because I explained to you all, some of you may have caught the video, some of you may not have caught the video, but she had did um, malicious destruction of property against the neighbor's car, right? This is what they said. And this is what they went. she went to court for. And it was like $500 worth of damages. And she actually went to jail for three months for that. For three months. So I felt like if she went to jail for three months for $500 worth of damage. Imagine if she wasn't my tenant. What she would have went to. How long she could have went to jail for. For what she did to my property. Um... With this going down, see, I never ever felt like a punishment had to be issued in my name. You know what I'm saying? They say, the Bible says, revenge is mine, saith the Lord. Meaning, revenge doesn't belong to you. Revenge doesn't belong to me. None of us should have to ever lift a finger in the name of revenge, right? So... I never felt like something had to happen in my name. Like I never felt like I would get any kind of satisfaction because this is what the justice I received. This is what I received in my name for my direct affront. I never felt that. Punishment is punishment. Because I feel like we're all, it's all connected, right? So punishment is punishment. Regardless if it's in my name or if it's just the law of cause and effect, karma, Whatever it is. So with that being said, because to go after her the way, you know, to sue her, I was going to pay a lawyer, A, have to take more time off of work, this, that, and the other. But you guys tell me how you feel about the saying of you don't kick a dog when it's down. The saying of don't poke a sleeping bear or don't poke a bear. I don't know how the sayings go. But how do you guys feel about that? Because honestly, the way I'm feeling is I'm complete. I'm complete. I don't feel like I have to put a nail in the situation just to drive my point home. Certainly not to prove anything to anybody outside of my life right I'm kind of feeling like all is well and it and it is what it is it's all it's 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 over it's over this thing that happened no matter who did what to my house I would not have wished that on anybody on anybody then the second part about the warrant I don't even know what that's for but that part can be like, okay, fine, whatever, you know? Um, so what do you guys think about that? What do you think about that? I kind of feel like this news got back to me for a reason, really, for real. Because I would have had no way of knowing because it's not like I'm sitting around running searches on people's names. I'm not doing that. I'm not consumed with this situation. I'm not obsessed with this situation. So I would have had no way of knowing any of that. But yet the news found its way back to me for a reason. The fact that the project manager and the workers were there when four police officers came knocking on the door. We are given information so that we can do something with it. What do you guys think I was given this information for? What should I be doing with it? I already told you what I think. I think it was, you know, it, it is done. It is done. You don't have to lift a finger. You don't have to do another thing toward the situation because karma is swift. Swift. My heart and my prayers go out to that family because to even do what was done, you had had to been in pain for a long time. 
a long time to even do what was done to me, I'm saying. You know, there was a lot going wrong for a long time. This didn't just start with me. This started long before me. My prayers go out to that situation. I hope we're not past the point of healing. I hope we're not at a point of no return. I hope that healing can still be found. That mercy can still be found. That comfort somewhere, somehow can still be found and felt. I don't know how. I don't know how, but I do know that with God, all things are possible.